So how can we identify extreme points in a polyhedron? Let's look at a polyhedron given by the set of x satisfying these inequalities. So again, ai transpose is non-zero for all i1 up to m. So how do we recognize extreme points of this at p? Well, it turns out that there is a theorem that gives a characterization. So let x star be in p and let E denote the set of indices such that AI transpose X star is equal to BI. Then X star is an extreme point of P if and only if the system AI transpose X equal to BI where I is in E has a unique solution. Or equivalently, the matrix whose rows comprise of AI transpose I in E has rank N. Well, it's easy to see that this system has a unique solution if and only if the matrix whose rows comprise of AI transpose has rank N because they are N variables. In order to have a unique solution, you need the coefficient matrix to have full column rank and the column rank is the same as the rank of a matrix so these two conditions are equivalent it's actually not too difficult to prove this I leave this as an exercise but let's see now how you can use this to determine if some point is an extreme point All right. so let P be this set is x star equal to 1 1 an extreme point well clearly you can try to graph this and do this graphically but we're not going to do that so we're going to use this theorem that we have just stated the first thing to do is identify all the inequalities that are satisfied with equality at x star and look at the system corresponding to those inequalities if we plug in uh, 1 1 into the first inequality it certainly satisfies that with equality so as x star satisfies the following so x1 star plus 2 x2 star is 3 and also 2 x1 star minus x2 star is 1 and it doesn't satisfy the third inequality with equality because x1 star is 1 one is bigger than zero but now if we look at this and try to solve this well there's a unique solution because if you look at the coefficient matrix 1 2 2 minus 1 has a unique solution since has rank 2 and it's easy to see that this is rank 2 because the determinant is not zero hence star is an extreme point of P by the previous theorem now let's look at another example this time let's look at three variables is x star equal to 1 1 1 an extreme point of P now notice that this time P is not in quite the form that we want. We have an equality. But that doesn't really pose a difficulty because equality can be treated as a pair of inequality. And if we plug in a point on either inequality, it's going to be satisfied with equality. So what we're looking at is we just plug this x star in and see which constraint is satisfied with equality. And then you copy that down and ask if this system has a unique solution. Let's do this. X star satisfies the following. All right. So if you plug it in the first inequality, well, the left hand side is three, the right hand side is three, so it does satisfy the first inequality with equality. The second way, just copy it down because it's an equality. How about the third one? The left hand side is two, and the right hand side is one, so it doesn't satisfy the inequality with equality. 
and the last one again the left hand side is 1 the right hand side is 0 so it doesn't satisfy that with equality now let's look at this system this is a system with three unknowns and two equations and so there cannot be a unique solution so x star is not an extreme point Now suppose I want to actually come up with two other points, say y and z, such that x star lies within the line segment between y and z. And y and z have to be in P. How do we construct them? And here's where we make use of the fact that this system has no unique solution. What you do is very simple. We first find a non-zero solution to the null space of the coefficient matrix. So let's write down the coefficient matrix here. And if we do a row reduction, what we can take is uh, d equals minus 217. And now, if I look at the points y equal x star minus, say, 1 over 10d, and z equal x star plus 1 over 10d, well, then x star is equal to 1 half y plus 1 half z. And you can easily check that y and z satisfy all these constraints, and they are distinct. And so x star is not an extreme point. Well, we'll do a check. So what is y? y is 6 over 5, 9 over 10, and 3 over 10. Alright, so we'll plug into all these inequalities and check if y satisfied. Okay, so 6 over 5 plus 2 times 9 over 10. That's 1, 2 times 9 over 10 is 9 over 5, so this is 15 over 5, and so that's 3. That shows the first inequality is satisfied. Now, minus 2 times 6 over 5 plus 3 times 9 over 10, minus 3 over 10, that's minus 24 plus 27 minus 3 over 10 and that's 0 and then 6 over 5 plus 3 over 10 that's 15 over 10 that's bigger than 1 and 9 over 10 is bigger than 0 Okay, so y is in P. Uh, similarly, you can check that z is in P. And now this gives you a hint as to how you can prove the theorem. When the system of equations coming from the inequalities that are satisfied with equality x star does not have a unique solution, then you can find something non-zero in the null space of the coefficient matrix. And if you move in either direction given by that non-zero solution uh, from the point x star a tiny amount, then you will still be within the set P. And that's how you can prove one direction of this. The direction that this proves is if this doesn't have a unique solution, then x star is not an extreme point. And the other direction is a lot easier. If this system has a unique solution, then x star is an extreme point. See if you can prove that.